Get ready to be entertained because both of these teams are shot-making machines. And for Louisville, it's Asia Durr. She's a ticket-selling player. I'd buy a ticket to see her play. She's one of the top scorers in the NCAA tournament. She is 18 and a half points a game. She can score from all three levels. She is terrific in their offense. And Jeff Walls, the head coach, will run a lot of sets to get her open. Oh, she's Deja. She's Deja Durr. Now for Stanford, a long way from home, but they are feeling quite comfortable here at Rupp Arena. That's the third year in a row they're in Lexington for the NCAA tournament. And they've done all right. They've knocked off the one seed both times they've come here. And it's been a roller coaster. Okay, it's more of their season. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Let's check okay. in with Allison Williams. Well, Beth, since you just took my entire open, I'm just going to send it back to you. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's OK. Uh, do you want me to fake it through here, though? I can head over there. I'm on the opposite end. Yeah. Yeah, so three and one here. They've knocked off the ACC champ each season. Yep. She's fast. Yep. <laughs> Okay, she's one seed in ACC champ. Cheryl yep. Flores. She's a younger. Yeah, that's who it is. You know, she's a younger. Yep. Oh boy. That's what she looks like to me. The young version. Presented by Capital One. Lexington, Kentucky. And the Stanford Cardinal, the four seed, taking on the top seed in the region, the Louisville Cardinals, trying to extend the best regular season in school history into a deep run into the postseason. The winner of this one will face a surprise, the six seed Oregon State Beavers, who upset the two seed Baylor Lady Bears. They hit nine triples, and they got a big night for Marie Gulich inside with 26 points. And they got the upset of Baylor to end the Lady Bears 30 game winning streak. And so now Oregon State is into the Elite Eight. So is Mississippi State. Texas and UCLA underway tonight as we get set now for Louisville and Stanford. And we welcome you inside Rupp Arena here in Lexington, Kentucky. Beth Mullins alongside Debbie Antonelli. Allison Williams is with us as well. And Debbie, the number one overall seed for the first time in this region, the Louisville Cardinals with the ACC's Player of the Year, Asia Durr. Beth, we were just entertained by the last game, right? We were. Wait for this one. There's shot makers and playmakers all over the court for both sides. But for Louisville, it's the ACC Player of the Year, Asia Durr. She can beat you with a basketball in three different levels. She can score in their transition game. She's very good off staggers, off pin downs. She can work in their pick and roll game. She shoots the three at a very high level. And she has some pressure taken off her because she's playing alongside Maisha Hines Allen, who's a former ACC Player of the Year. On the other side, the Stanford Cardinal. Well, things didn't look good early in the season for this perennial powerhouse and two-time former national champion. The Cardinal opened up at 500. In fact, a six and six record out of the gate. They fell out of the top 25, but then rallied. And they won 18 of their next 22 to get back to the Sweet 16. And let's check in with Allison Williams. Beth, Lexington is close to home for Louisville, but it feels like home for Stanford. This is the third consecutive year they're playing in the Sweet 16 here in Lexington. And they've fared well in the past going three and one, including last year when they advanced out of this region into the final four. Now, in both of the previous trips here, they've had to beat the number one seed in ACC 
WC champion, which they will try to do again tonight against Louisville. Head coach Tara Vanderveer said, I certainly hope that, hope that it helps being comfortable and familiar with this arena. We know we've had some great memories here in the past, and we just want to make some new ones this time around. Thank you, Allison. Home whites for Louisville and the road black jerseys for Stanford. And the winner into the Elite Eight and a date with Oregon State on Sunday afternoon. So Asia Durr, number 25 in white, is the ACC Player of the Year. And she's defending Kiana Williams, who's been the hot scorer for Stanford this latter part of the season. Alana Smith, the 6'4 junior from Australia, knocks it down. As we take a look at our Capital One starting lineups, Erica Carter runs the point. Maisha Hines-Allen is a former ACC Player of the Year. That's her right there, number two in white. And Sam Furing has been terrific, giving them a third scoring option in the postseason. While the previous game, Oregon State, did you see the ball go off and quickly McPhee's leg? Good defense by Jazz Jones, number 23 in white. Beth, this game is going to be about offense. Yep. These two teams can score. Can the other one stop? The, the other from getting the quality shots that they want. The starting lineup for Stanford includes Brittany McPhee, the six-foot senior from Normandy Park, Washington, the Pac-12 Scholar Athlete of the Year and an All-America candidate. Ernest Sneezek will bring it across midcourt. Smith getting another touch. They go over the top of Hines Allen for two. Really good early offense and quick hitter by Stanford. Sneezek is a terrific passer, makes good decisions, doesn't turn the ball over very much for Stanford. Here is Asia Durr inside, Furing kicks it back out top. Jones off the hesitation with the left hand. Well, she's a tough matchup for Stanford because she can go off the bounce. She's got a terrific mid-range game, and she's very quick on the defensive end. She's got the defensive assignment, Jasmine Jones, against Brittany McPhee. Here's a look at Jeff Walls now in his 11th season at Louisville. They've been to the national championship game twice in 09 and 2013, falling both times to UConn. And this season, the co-champs in the ACC in the regular season, and they won the conference tournament for the first time in 25 years. A postseason trophy for Louisville. Smith has hit her first three shot attempts. How about Alana Smith on the elbow, on an early post up in transition, and then a nice perimeter jump shot. Jones off the bounce, drops it off to Fury and wraps it around. Both these teams are so well coached, well prepared, understand where the help is coming from, terrifically by Jones. Sneezy threw it away. There's a look at Tara Vandeveer, the two-time national champ, 1996 Olympic gold medal coach for Team USA. She's a Naismith Hall of Famer with over a thousand career wins. They also have the last Pac-12 National Championship. It's hard to believe you got to go back to 1992, the last time the conference won it all. Big collision in the lane, no whistle, and the turnover will give it to Louisville. And Jeff Wall's upset there wasn't a, a charge call right in the middle of the lane. A lot of c contact and a huge collision. You gotta have a whistle on that one, Beth. I would think, and both sides know. You can you get somebody out of the game here with some foul trouble, could be a huge swing. Both these teams do run a little bit deeper than the two we saw earlier. Hines Allen, out of blocks. The swat by Johnson. Terrific defense. Going to their horn series. Sneezing. Three, no good from Williams. Another opportunity for Stanford on the old board. Look how fast the cadence is for both teams. They are terrific running through their sets, through their options. Both these teams can go into their third and fourth option offensively in a set. Carter forces the turnover. Hines Allen thought about it and thinks about it again. I can hear Jeff Williams from across the 
court. Yeah, and yeah. by Aisha Hines Allen to shoot it. And that depth's going to be tested, Beth. Both these teams playing really up tempo. This is entertaining early. Williams, the freshman who has really come on strong. 5-8 out of San Antonio. She's been terrific in the NCAA tournament, averaging 16 and a half points, and she's six for 10 from the three-point line in the last two games. Showing us right there, she can go off the bounce, too. Fury will test the waters. Sam Fury knocks down the three. 24% three-point shoot, almost begging her to pass her the ball. Just her sixth triple of the season. And one thing you know, Debbie, when you're playing against Stanford, Tara's going to leave somebody That's open. Right. Or two. They're going to sag and force you to make some shots. Wow, that is a <laughs> tough shot. A runner off the glass by Brittany McPhee. OK, Beth, here we go. We got some good, we got some action going up and down. McPhee has bounced back nicely from a foot injury earlier in the season and, and some struggles offensively in the Pac-12 tournament. But she's back to her old self now in the NCAA tournament. Asia Durr looking for her first opportunity over five minutes into the game. Oh, Sam Fury beat three Cardinal for that win. What a terrific effort. will pull up in the lane. Didn't have her feet right on that shot. Asia Durr went flying off the court, knocked a whole bunch of stanchion and um, some what do you of the call NCAA, that stuff? The NCAA, NCAA bunting got the, the curtain, the black. Tossed askew there. And it's black, just so you know. <laughs> Here comes McPhee. Three on two. And a foul on Asia Durr. Sam Fury putting our, the Stanford Cardinal on notice. If you want to leave me open, I feel very comfortable. Catch and shoot outside the arc. What a terrific job by Louisville, setting the pace with their offense. Fury going to work on the glass as well. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. What's in your wallet? And in part by Google, official cloud of the NCAA. Welcome back to this Sweet 16 matchup between Louisville and Stanford. The Cardinals with a third three-point advantage. And how about this kind gesture from Stanford head coach Tara Vanderveer. She found out that South Carolina would have the same plane, so she left a note for their head coach, Don Staley, saying, Hi, Don. Great season. Keep it going. Let's meet in Columbus for a rematch. She is so well respected within the coaching community, and you can see why taking the time to leave a little note behind for Don, ladies. <laughs> Stanford's NCAA charter brought them here to Lexington, and that plane went on to pick up South Carolina to take them to Albany. And what was what was Don's response? Uh, what brightens your day when the pilot hands you this from yeah. the goat when you walk on board your your plane to the Sweet 16? Terrific, really great. Um, Respect between those two, and of course, Tara coached Dawn in the 96 Olympics. Tara, number three all time in NCAA tournament wins in Final Fours. This is 32 appearances in her legendary coaching career. The first time she's matching wits with Jeff Walls in Louisville as they try for the third year in a row to upset the one seed in the regionals. There is a lot of offense in this game, exactly as we anticipated the start would be. Dana Evans on the floor gets the foul. A little too handsy there from Dana. You know, and, and that's Dana's job is to pick up the tempo, bring the energy, speed up Stanford on the offensive end if you can. 
There are years when Tara's team has been very much a rhythm and read team. This year, they're a little bit better off the bounce. They struggle to score some, but she continues to put in the offenses that fit what her personnel is. McPhee gets into the lane again. They've been strong off the bounce, getting to the bucket. That's twice she's gone to her offhand on a drive to the basket. That's the first time we've seen Louisville slow it down yeah. and stand around a little bit. They should do just the one shot attempt so far. Natalie Fingo knocks that out of bounds. Well, the NIT will be in New York for the Final Four on Tuesday night at 7 Eastern. It's Western Kentucky and Utah. In semifinal action, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. But during the last timeout, Jeff Walls told his team, neither team is stopping anyone. We've done a good job of turning them over, but we have to make sure we keep our composure on the offensive end. He said they can't guard us, though. Make sure you keep running it at this pace because they don't want to try and keep, they can't keep up with us. He said keep Erica Carter with the three to beat the shot clock buzzer. Two minutes now to go in the corner and an offensive foul. Called on Stanford. Here's the poise and composure that Allison was talking about that Coach Walls wanted from his team. Terrific job by Asia Durr to draw two and kick. And look at the reaction. Bang. I knew it was going in. <laughs> now will set up shop at the point. Here comes Durr. They want to get her a look. She'll try for three. And I love that set. You got a double screen at the top, and Durr just reads. You go under, she makes you pay. On the drive, getting down to the baseline. Boy, there was a big collision over there right for the Jeff Balls, and he is hot. Asia Durr got run over. Dejanay Carrington got the finish. Evans to Jones. Short on the shot. McPhee with the rebound. Final minute of the quarter. See how fast the game goes when the ball's going in the basket? McPhee took an extra step. Watch this right here. Oh, maybe she sold oh, it a little, little bit. Slopper. Yep. Seventh turnover now, by the way, in the quarter for Stanford. Resulting in five points for Louisville. Durr again. Defender got stuck going under. Heinz Allen offensive rebound. Great bounce. Terrific timing. Good hands. Terrific effort on the glass. And Keanu Williams quiets the crowd. Shot clock is off. Well, Coach Walls was going for a two for one. He's got the opportunity here. On the drive. And good. And that'll do it. 72% shooting for Stanford. 64% for the Ville. One done. Allison with Taro when we come back. matchup between Louisville and Stanford. Louisville with a six-point lead here with Stanford head coach Tara Vanderveer. Coach, how did you assess your defense? You've been able to take away Asia Durr, but they've had other players step up. What have you seen? Uh, the way I would assess, uh, assess our defense, I can't say on the air. So uh, we have to really come out be much more aggressive. We're getting them get old boards, uh, turning the ball over. So we have a lot of work to do in this next quarter. What are the biggest adjustments we should expect to see? Well, I, you know, I want some people that are going to put a body on 
have somebody rebound. That would start. So I'm going to look at Maya Dodson right now. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Allison. So we should be seeing Maya Dotson, the 6'3 freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, stepping in. The turnover is a problem for Stanford, and Louisville has converted all three of those offensive rebounds into points. Well, I think Louisville's getting whatever they want out of their offense right now, and the tempo is to Louisville's favor. They're forcing Stanford to play maybe a little quicker than they like to play. But Tara Vanderveer doesn't miss a thing on the basketball no. court. I've never seen anybody put so much effort and detail into practice. And a lot of times when you talk to her players, it's so much repetition that it's almost boring. But that's a great sign of why her teams have always been so good. They practice the way they're going to play. Dotson averages about 11 minutes per game, so she may see uh, more of that tonight and immediately the turnover well that was a gift and it will go right back to louisville Asia Durr taking the seat after going one for three to start the game winner into the elite eight with oregon state the six seed upset the two seed Baylor earlier tonight back-to-back -back turnovers and then take it right back. First of all, Tara Vanderveer upset. That was a scouting report steal. And then the ball didn't bounce their way. Dana Evans just does a great job here of getting in the passing lane and getting the steal as Brittany McVie just trying to go too quickly, afraid she was going to travel. Looks like she was trying to hold up the pass because she saw Evans. Offensive rebound again. And that was by Dodson. Heinz Allen can't knock it down. Stanford the other way. Freshman with the handoff and Williams turns it over. Another giveaway. Louisville can't convert that one. Louisville is scrappy. They will pressure the rebounder. Try to get an easy steal. Try to slow down the progression of Stanford up the floor. Nice job getting into the lane for Carrington. Carrington just dribbles right through the middle of Louisville's defense. Jones, who's not a three-point threat, so McPhee will play off her and give her a cushion. Heinz Allen over Dodson for two. Heinz Allen. Heinz Allen now with eight to go along with four rebounds. McPhee. And a blocking foul called on Heinz Allen. It's her first. Well, coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 continues tonight on TBS and CBS. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. Durr is waiting to check in. And McPhee at the line, 67% for the senior. She's got seven. Marta Snezak will come back in along with Durr. Marta Snezak is the quarterback of this team. She runs everything for Tara Vanderveer. She has a great understanding. She's also the player that Tara gets the most upset with, and, but Marta can handle it because Marta understands what the expectation is. This is a battle-tested Stanford team. They played a really difficult Non-conference schedule, Jones with the pretty assist to Heinz Allen. Really unselfish play. They're shooting at a very high percentage. 11 times this year, Louisville's been over the 50-point mark from, from the floor. 50-point, 50, 50%, 50 I should say. Sorry. 60% right now. Here's a second chance for Stanford. McPhee. 
Rebounded by Fury. Durr's going to get a touch again here for Louisville. They want to keep her on the right side, a left-hander, so Sneezek will force her back to this side of the floor, and Asia hits it anyway. Well, you got to close that space on her. She's too good at getting separation. She can go one dribble, pull up right. Danger zone here for Stanford. They're down 10. And the response on the three. Carrington, the sophomore from San Diego. This is a Stanford team that last year in the Elite Eight down 18 points against Notre Dame in this building. They rallied to win and get back to the Final Four. And Fearing fouled. So, Beth, you're right. The scouting report is to force the lefty to the right. So, look at Marta Sneezek overplaying her left hand, but you got to close that space up on Durr because she can go one dribble, pull up right. So, while you force her that way, she's capable of scoring, but you've got to get into her space. Jasmine Jones, the pull up. Fearing swooping in for the rebound. Continues to have a terrific postseason. Hines Allen lost the handle, so now turnover's an issue for Louisville as well. They've got eight of them, and Stanford well, not only matching them, but they want to keep the lead there. They got 10 giveaways, so it's gotten a little sloppy here in this second quarter. Jeff Walls emptying out the playbook. Boy, he's got a lot of sets to call over there. Durr stepping back to the right and gets it. Got a foul on the drive. Durr's going to get a two here on this one. Again, watch the overplay. Marta Sneeza comes with high hands on the left side, and Durr. Gets the dead roll, if you will. She is a scoring mentality, and she has no problem going right one dribble pull up. You got to make her make two dribbles, Beth. She had that 47 point game against Ohio State earlier this year. She dropped 36 on Notre Dame, 38 on Georgia Tech in league play. Well, she led the ACC in three-point percentage at almost 45%, and 50% of the shots she takes are outside the arc, so you have to make her put it on the floor. Aaron Abdur running the baseline here, coming out on the left side, looking for that three. Not close on that one. Williams directing traffic. Under five to go in the first half. Music's not a threat to score. Neither is Kaylee Johnson normally. That's a tough play. You make her make that play. That's a big counter off the glass. She only averages four yeah, a game, so a that threat. is a bonus right there. Now she's making herself a threat. Now she rebounds, sets screens, she offensive rebounds and defends. That's what Kaylee Johnson does really well. Jones. McPhee's gonna sag off of her and help out a little bit on Hines Allen, but Maisha was able to split them. Louisville's junior, the ACC Player of the Year, Asia Durr, starting to heat up. You want to make her go right? No problem. Pull up jump shot. Stick a hand in her face. Pull the triple.
people that hit you up during a game. It's just, it's we're funny. Not, we're still not hearing them. Aisha Hines Allen misses the first one at the line. Both teams shooting better than 60%, but they've combined to turn it over 19 times. I think a part of it is the pace, but I'm perfectly fine with 60% from both yeah. teams. And like we said at the beginning, I didn't think either team could stop the other from scoring. I think they're too good offensively. Let's check in with Allison. Well, guys, nobody's more excited to see Asia Durr have some success than her brother and manager, TJ. These two have a really special bond, and it was strengthened by an ordeal Asia's junior year. TJ was diagnosed with what ended up being a non-cancerous brain tumor, but on the day of his surgery, Asia promised him, I'm going to play for you. She ended up scoring 30 points in that game, which was a win. These two are so close that before Asia even committed to Louisville, TJ said, I Will go to school wherever you do. He's now the team's manager. And while they are very close and Asia wouldn't trade this relationship and having him as a team manager for anything, she did say it's not all good. Typical <laughs> brother sister relationship. <laughs> she admitted he can get a bit annoying when he's trying to teach her how to do things or, or won't shut up about being right when she's trying to shoot. <laughs> A lot of us probably have a sibling like that. Yeah, at least she knows she can get a rebounder <laughs> just about any time she wants, not just because he's the brother, he's the manager. Asia tells a great story, by the way, in uh, the Players Tribune, if you haven't had a chance to check that out just yet. Asia talks about her family, and in particular, her brother, TJ. No brother wants to be kissed by their sister. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, Louisville on top, 38 to 29. And Evans is going to be called for her second personal foul, both of the same variety, trying to get the hands on to slow up the driving sneezing. I haven't had many whistles uh, for fouls. There's only nine fouls committed for both sides, but two on Evans will send her to the side. We're getting close to more turnovers than baskets, though, from each team. It's, the pace is very fast. We're going to call a held ball right here. And usually when you reach around somebody from behind like that, it's a foul. Tara Vanderveer can't believe it. Now watch yeah. right here. There was a foul there. She fouls her there. Now that should yeah. be a foul. Instead, the help ball Stanford will keep. Debbie, you mentioned the pace of this game, and while it's Louisville that really wants to push it, Jeff Walls was telling his girls that it's too fast at times. He said that's when the turnovers are happening, is when you're playing too fast, you've got to take your time a bit more. So, Allison, that's a great point, because that's the difference between playing fast and being in a hurry. So you want to be frenetic on the defensive end, and you want to try to speed the other team up. But when you come down offensively, you want to execute. So now an issue at the point guard spot for Jeff Walls. Both both his points have two fouls. Dana Evans will check back in with two, replacing Erica Carter. Well, if you had to, you could move Asia Durr to the point. You'd prefer not to, because you don't want to take away from her scoring. But I also think Jeff Walls has some trust in Erica Carter, because she's a little bit more of a veteran player than the freshman Dana Evans. Carter, the junior from Los Angeles. Williams can't knock it down. Some encouragement from her teammates heading down to the other end of the court, trying to keep the freshman up. She's two for six with three turnovers so far. Lock and trail off that screening action is Marta Sneezik. She is really challenged to defend Asia Durr. Trying again to get her to go to the right and give it up. She does there. Deering will step back for three. And the tip up and in by Jones. So Stanford went up what they wanted defensively, but then the offensive rebound spectacular by Jones. Uh, 
Riley Shook really does a good job of rebounding. Set a little drag screen. Fury missed it. away at their largest deficit of the night. Final two minutes of this first half. And Atlanta Smith, who started out the game three for three, in the first two minutes hasn't scored since. Watch Jones with a tip. And I think Brittany oh, McPhee, McPhee had a little something yeah. to do with that as well. Yeah. Credit to two points, though, to Jones. go in front of a pro Louisville crowd in Lexington at Rupp Arena. Really good help. Carrington one on three and still attacks and scores. He's tough. Look at the shoulders on Carrington. She's got nine. Dad Darren played in the NFL. Mom Vicky. Good trackster growing up and also coached Carrington a little bit. Through the elevator door screen. Hines Allen had it blocked by Katie Johnson. Durr trying to clean it up and a foul. You foul Durr on the jump shot while she's shooting a shot with her right hand? That's not reading your scouting report. I don't think buddy. Coach Vandeveer is going to be <laughs> pleased with that one in the film room. First foul on Smith. That will get Durr to the line. Junior out of Douglasville, Georgia. 83% on the season. Nobody spends as much time in the gym as Asia Durr, and I'm sure TJ is right there with her. As good as she's been over the course of her career, Jeff Walls was telling us yesterday, it still has taken her a little time to grow into that leadership role and understand that not only is it okay, but it's your responsibility to take a lot of shots for us and to score a lot of points for us. Fury with the rebound, and Jeff Walls is screaming at him one shot. Flatten it out. This is going to Fury. Durr, Fury setting the screen. She'll roll, looking for the three, short. That'll take care of the first half, 42-31. Louisville with the lead into the locker room, trying to get to the Elite Eight for the winner of this one, a date with Oregon State. Let's send it over to Allison. Thanks, Beth. Maisha, you talked about needing to get off to better starts. How did this one feel to begin and as the half went on? Um, we felt pretty good going into half right now. Um, momentum's on our side. We have a big crowd here. They're getting us going, and um, we just need to stick with the second half, and it's ours. What is the most important thing to stick with in the second half? Transition. Um, and once we push the ball, we're getting easy layups. Um, and defense, too. Defensively, we're doing a pretty good job on them. Uh, we just got to keep it up. Maisha, thank you. Thank you, Beth. Allison, both sides shooting better than 50%. Heinz Allen leading the way for Louisville with 11 points. And we will get you back to the studio with Maria, Andy, and Nell after a short break as the Cardinal and the Cardinals fight for a spot in the Elite Eight. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And we are 20 minutes away from a spot in the Elite Eight, Louisville and Stanford. Some of the Louisville uh, men's players making the trip over here to Lexington to watch the action in the Sweet 16. The winner of this one will take on Oregon State. The Beavers have already won and advanced. And Mississippi State also has moved on on this side of the bracket as well. Beth Mullins 
Debbie Antonelli, Allison Williams with you courtside. Time to check out the Google Cloud highlights, Debbie, and a pretty evenly matched first half. Well, when you take a look at the play of Asia Dura, the get, scan report says Forza right, and Marta Sneezek does a good job of making her go right, but you gotta close that space on her so she doesn't get enough room to get into the rhythm of her shot. You go underneath the ball screen, she's going to make you pay. Let's see what adjustment Tara Vanderveer makes defensively on Asia Durr. And then Maisha Hines Allen, she's been terrific. She's got 11 first half points, five for 10 from the floor. She's just scoring at will against the Cardinal defense. And that's two ACC Players of the Year for Louisville. This Asia Durr this year and two years ago, Maisha Hines Allen as Durr takes it hard to the rim. Coaches love it when they write something up and the players come right out of the locker room or out of the timeout and execute it. And Louisville does right there with Durr. And then she is going to be whistled for the foul on Sneezik. That's a great take by Marta Sneezik. And you take a look at that's just too many turnovers for Tara Vanderveer. For a team that averages 15 second chance points, they've got to do a better job on the glass. And Marta Sneezik attacking Asia Durr on the defensive end. That's one thing we did not see her do in the first half. So there's adjustment one for Tara Vanderveer. Second foul on Asia Durr. And oh, by the way, the turnovers match the field goals for Stanford, 12 each. So they've definitely got to work on chopping those down. Too many giveaways. Going to their weave action at Stanford Garden it all the way out towards midcourt. Pull up Jasmine Jones, baseline jumper is good. Allison? Senior Britt McPhee, leader of this team, and she just talked to her teammates at the half about playing the way they're capable of. She said, we know we can be better than this, and we can still fight our way back in this ball game. She said a couple things we have to do, though. We have to limit them to just one shot, and shot. we have to be more physical on the defensive end. There's a nice strong drive right there from McPhee. So Brittany McPhee has scored all three of her baskets with her offhand driving to the basket. That's three left-handed shots for the right-handed senior. Durr waits for Sneezek to blow by and hits. So Jeff Wall says, I'm going to worry about all that screening action. I'm going to flatten it out, and I'm just going to let Durr go one-on-one -on -one against Sneezek. Guard this. The kick out for three, and Williams off the top of the backboard. Second chance for Smith won't go. I see you flatten it out. You say cross up once, cross twice. I'm going left anyway, Marta. TJ says that's not bad. That's all right, I'll take it. Keanu Williams just can't get comfortable, Beth. Nice crossover there, but not the finish. And Smith off the front of the rim. Third opportunity here for Stanford. Carrington will pull up. And that's short of fourth chance now for the Cardinal. McPhee for three. Williams will pull up. Six chances for Stanford. And they come away empty. Well, there goes the rebounding deficit. They just tied it up there with that one possession. Or seven times, seven possessions. Yeah, there goes their field goal percentage, yep. too, though, in the wrong direction as the counterweight. 0 for 8 now for Stanford. So now it's Jasmine Jones's turn on an isolation. Smith clears. See how the Cardinal do in transition. Smith will pull up. That's nine misses in a row for Stanford. Jeff Walls wants him to take a breath here. You know, he's just calling every set, so they're just reacting to their coach, who's now becoming the point guard. Here comes McPhee off the takeaway. Hines Allen, a whistle and a foul. And a whole lot of handful of leather for Hines Allen. Let's see if she gets her with the body.
Louie doesn't think it was a foul. Second on Maisha. Was there anybody? Oh boy. We haven't seen her react like that since she got a pair of sneakers from Kyrie Irving <laughs> when they went to visit an NBA game. McPhee with the free throw. Carrington get a turn, getting a turn on Durr. Foul on the reach in underneath. Hey, Sports Center tonight coming up after our game on ESPN with Kevin Connors and John Anderson. They'll break down the Sweet 16 games for you. Also, an injury in Major League Baseball. And Todd McShay's impressions of Josh Allen's pro day, the quarterback up at Wyoming at Sports Center, 1130 Eastern on ESPN. We know Oregon State and Mississippi State are moving on to the women's Elite Eight. And Asia Durr was just fouled shooting a three. Well, Tara Vanderveer said, Marta Sneezy, you're going to take a break. And Carrington's had her the last couple of possessions has guarded Asia Durr. Asia Durr, very talented, very good at creating space off the bounce. We know she's good working off screening action. Jeff Walsh is just putting the ball in her hands here in the second half. Asia now with 14 points. ACC Player of the Year. She's also in the U.S. National Team pool. As we start to move closer to the 2020 Olympics in Japan under the direction of new national team coach Dawn Staley. South Carolina will get us started, by the way, tomorrow morning, 11.30 Eastern. They'll take on the 11 seed Buffalo Bulls. Got four more games coming for you all day tomorrow on ESPN. Chance to see Asia Wilson play for South Carolina, the three-time SEC Player of the Year. If you haven't seen her, you better check her out. Williams. And Stanford has gone cold. It's going to be out of bounds off of McPhee. That'll be the second on McPhee. They're going to call a foul on her there. They are just one for 11 now shooting in this second half as Stanford, as Louisville threatens to pull away. How about Mississippi State with Tara McCowan? Did she not miss a no, shot tonight 11, in their 11, win over NC State? 11 for 11. Impressive for the Bulldogs. Getting back to the Elite Eight for the second year in a row. McPhee hangs short on the shot after she dribbled it off of one of the Louisville players' foot. Misstep by yours oh, truly. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so wow. much for correcting yourself because I certainly did not want to have to correct you on that. <laughs> nice pick right there from Carrington. And then Carter is able to catch up with her. Ball still loose and Carrington was on the end line. We got a break in the action. Cards by 15 here in Lexington. Control. This was the block that was called a foul on Maisha Hines Allen. Her reaction is priceless. But Allison Williams, we've seen that look somewhere before. We have. It is the look of complete shock, although this was for a good reason. Check out it. Same exact facial expression. This was when Kyrie Irving came over and gave her his sneakers uh, after.
her warm-ups during a Celtics game she attended earlier this year. They were in Boston to play Boston College, went to the game, and she was hollering at him because they're both from Montclair, New Jersey, and she yelled it to him a few times. He went to high school there, so did she, and he came over with the shoes, and she was totally shocked, totally psyched. Same expression, though, <laughs> even though she was surprised the other way on that call. Hines Allen and the, the Cardinals getting it done so far. Can Stanford right the ship? They're just one of 12 shooting in this third quarter. And Louisville's three for six. Pull up, Jasmine Jones. Won't go. Maisha, by the way, not the only uh, top-notch athlete in the family. That's her brother, Josh, who is a linebacker here at Kentucky and a pro prospect himself. Of course, Maisha undoubtedly headed to the WNBA this summer. Yeah, and Josh Allen considered going into the draft this year. He got some first round buzz, but has decided to come back for his senior year here at Kentucky. Now, Maisha will tell you, she's the one that toughened up her younger brother. I asked Josh, though, he said, you really believe that? <laughs> You were probably small at one point, and he laughed. He said, yeah, no, I, I definitely got it from her and, and my other sister. He said, it is true. They would jump us now and then. But uh, <laughs> n none of that happening anymore. Two really great athletes, and he's out here supporting his sister. How much fun is that for the parents? Oh. One at Louisville and one at Kentucky. Well, behind all these great athletes, you often find some siblings that uh, work them over a time or two and, and vice versa. And all part of the growth process and the development. Yeah. 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 That tough outer shell and that confidence you have to develop over time. And what Jeff Walls has done right here is pretty much opened up the floor, taking away all the screening action that we saw in the first half, and he's just allowing his players to, to get the right matchup and go one-on-one -on -one off the bounce. Madison Square Garden will be hosting the NITs and the Final Four for the men, Mississippi State and Penn State on Tuesday night at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. You can also visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Louisville's going to switch to a zone here, I think, defensively on the sideline out of bounds play. McPhee will come back on here with 3.31 to go in the third quarter. Well, they show zone, but they actually get to man. McPhee hits the triple from Snezik. It takes Brittany McPhee a lot to load it up. But when she gets it loaded up, it gets that elbow under the ball. Dirt. And McPhee with the rebound. Six boards to go along with 15 points for Brittany. Let's see if Stanford can chip away at this deficit a little bit before the fourth quarter. Good Sneezik's pass picked off. Really good gapping up inside and help. You know Marta Sneezik, when she drives to the hoop, she's not going to score. She's going to pass. And Debbie, that's now more turnovers than baskets. 15 of them for Stanford. Durr again, they flatten it out. She fades and draws the foul. I call it dial it up scoring. You can dial up over there on the sideline, Jeff Walls, whatever you want, and his team can answer. You got to have some special talents, right, to be able to do that. You do. You have and to. And Durr have. is one of them. No question. <laughs> but Erica Carter can score off the bounce. Jasmine Jones can score off the bounce. That's what makes the team so dangerous. Maisha Hines Allen on the glass, on post up. Yep. Terrific screen and roll player. 34 and 2 on the season for Louisville. The best regular season in school history after a 20 and 0 start and an ACC championship. Even better than the two teams that reached the Final Four. When you have this many players that can go off the bounce, I don't want to get way ahead of myself, but I'm just. I'm thinking about what you have to have to be able to challenge UConn. And being able to score off the bounce from multiple positions where you can spread out the floor, that's tough to guard. Pushing foul going to be called on Stanford. 
UConn has its Sweet 16 game tomorrow against Duke at 1.30 on ESPN as Sneesick has now picked up her third foul. Now, Duke, Duke, by the way, is the only team to beat UConn in the NCAA tournament playing in the Northeast in the last 23 years. UConn is 69 and one when their fans can get on a bus and join them like they can in Albany. Get on a bus. Or a don't, minivan, don't car, have to leave the whatever. state. Or, or just, just across, across the border, the, across the Berkshires. So let me make sure that I don't, New York. don't get this confused with the people listening. I'm not projecting way ahead already. I'm just saying Louisville's got to take care of their business here today. They've got to take care of their business. Should they finish this one off, Oregon State's waiting next. I'm saying one of the things that you have to have is players that can score from multiple positions off the bounce to challenge UConn. That's your phone, Debbie. That's Scott Ruick on line one, <laughs> head coach of the Beavers. Well, this game's not even over yet. <laughs> Still a ways to go as Stanford kind of hangs around despite the difficult shooting. Here's what we got on deck for you tomorrow, Connecticut and Duke. One of the four games you can see back to back to back to back. You got the action going on with both Buffalo and Central Michigan. Felicia will get Jack and Sue Guevara's clubs. Can they pull off the monster upsets tomorrow and then a rematch of that epic 2011 national championship game? Texas A&M and Notre Dame will get reacquainted as well tomorrow. The Oregon Ducks and the, uh, the uh, triple-double machine of Sabrina Ionescu tomorrow night. There's some ticket selling players. As Asia Durr strikes again. 21 for Durr and the quick counter for Stanford. This is the most red I think I've ever seen in big blue country. This place is looking pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of fans in here from Louisville. <laughs> Durr off the mark. Big Blue Nation now lighting up Debbie's phones. <laughs> It is, it is quite a scene that you're you're unaccustomed to in here, for sure, at Rupp Arena. They've been terrific hosts here in Lexington uh, the last three years now for the regionals. Been spectacular. The two-handed swat by Fury. Hines Allen on the run, the catch on the Jeff Walls on the other side with Allison Williams. All Cardinals so far here in Europe. shooters contesting it, making it difficult for them to get the ball where they want to get it. When you let Stanford run their offense to precision, they pick you apart. So our effort in transition defense has been really well, except for when Maisha took a smoke break out back there on that layup. It was awful. So she has to fix that. And it, it's 10 more minutes. Stanford's a great basketball team. Asia Durr with 12 in the third quarter. We saw you talk to her one-on-one -on -one before the half. What did, what did you say to her? Well, we, 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 we came out and tried to go flat for her, clear things out, try to get her going, and uh, it worked well. And then our, her teammates have done a great job responding. They're getting her open, and she's knocking shots down. Jeff, thank you. Thank you. staying in front of shooters, contesting it, making it difficult for them to get the ball where they want to get it. When you let Stanford run their offense to precision, they pick you apart. So our effort in 
transition defense has been really well, except for when Maisha took a smoke break out back there on that layup. It was awful. So she has to fix that. And it, it's 10 more minutes. Stanford's a great basketball team. Asia Durr with 12 in the third quarter. We saw you talk to her one-on-one -on -one before the half. What did, what did you say to her? Well, we, 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 we came out and tried to go flat for her, clear things out, try to get her going, and uh, it worked well. And then our, her teammates have done a great job responding. They're getting her open, and she's knocking shots down. Jeff, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Allison. Let's take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. And uh, Debbie, it starts with the coach and his ace player. This is on the way to the locker room at the end of the second quarter. And this is what Jeff told Allison. One, four, low, flatten it out. Let her go one-on-one. -on -one. No need any screening action. A little dribble handoff right here. Knocks down a triple. And it doesn't matter who Tara Vanderveer has put on Asia Durer to defend her in this third quarter. Asia found a big basket. Huge third quarter for Asia and for Louisville as they uh, busted open a close game. The winner has a date in the Elite Eight with Oregon State. The six seed, the stunner over the two seed Baylor earlier tonight. Marie Gulich with a 26-point performance. And the rest of the Beavers threw in nine triples as they knocked out Baylor and ended their 30-game winning streak. So they are now one win away, Oregon State, from a second trip to the Final Four in the last three years. Big defensive stop by Maya Dotson, the 6'3 freshman. D and up right there on that possession. Interior passing, Furing couldn't finish. Reset on the shot clock. Reach in foul called on Williams. Well, the ACC and the Pac-12 both with four teams in the Sweet 16. And prior to Oregon State's game earlier tonight, a little hug from Tara and some West Coast love, some West Coast bias. With those two and uh, Oregon State, the win over Baylor. Congratulations to UCLA. They got a win over Texas tonight. So they have moved on. So the Pac-12, 2-0 tonight. Stanford in some trouble here. Oregon will be playing tomorrow. The Pac-12 has had a team in the Final Four in nine of the last 10 years. It's impressive. But they have not been able to take home the big prize. They don't have a national championship during that stretch. Jones scores on the breakaway. The ACC, NC State lost earlier tonight. Louisville playing now. You've got Duke against UConn tomorrow and Notre Dame taking on Texas A&M tomorrow. Oh, look at the Dirt. Oh, and a hard fall. Wow, Asia Durr. Slow to get up. Hard foul, no foul, no call, right? There was no, no call on that. No whistle on that. Jeff Walsh thinks there should have been one. He's working the officiating crew. TJ can barely look. Working out the play. Shot clock winding down. Hey. You can melt the clock. You can take it all the way down. That's the sign of a veteran team. That's in rhythm. 24 for Asia during the largest lead of the night for Louisville. Carrington trying to answer and does. I think Balls is saying 12. He wants him to wait till there's 12 seconds on the shot clock before they run it. And that's exactly what they do. Running overload. Furing. It's dialing up, Beth, I'm telling you. Whatever you want. Offensive foul called on Stanford. 
see whether or not there should have been a whistle on Durr on the drive. She bounces up and bounces right back with a triple. NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One, official bank and credit card of the NCAA. What's in your wallet? And it's the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One, continuing tomorrow on ESPN with uh, the remainder of the Sweet 16. We've got four of them starting at 11.30 tomorrow morning with South Carolina Buffalo, followed by UConn Duke, then Notre Dame A&M and Oregon Central Michigan. All those also available on your ESPN app if you're out and about. That is, uh, that is Wal <laughs> Wall's daughter with, the, with the number Bronx two. Cheer. Little, little, little raspberry for the rest of the crowd enjoying it well, here in Lexington. That's number four, actually. Number four. There's Kaylee and Jacob, and then there's Lola and Lucy. It's been all Louisville since uh, the first quarter here tonight as they try and move closer to a date with the Beavers of Oregon State in the Elite Eight on Sunday afternoon. What a catch in traffic. Durr has to jack from deep to try to beat the shot clock. That game, by the way, officially noon Eastern on Sunday. Good steal. And what will be the first of the Elite Eight games. We know Mississippi State has also advanced, and so has UCLA. Uh, what I'm learning from watching Jeff Walls here is that his team can play at any tempo. They can play fast. They can they have multiple scorers off the bounce. They're unselfish about what they run and who takes the shots. He can get a shot for anybody that he wants at any time. That's a lot for Scott Ruick and Oregon State to prepare for on Sunday. I thought Oregon State did a terrific job in their upset of Baylor earlier. It was their tempo. Right. They got it to their style of play. They had that balance. We call them Gulich, Gulich and the shooters because she dom can dominate inside and everybody else can shoot it from outside. But if you put a little banjo to that, you might have a nice tune. Mm. Mm -hmm. Gulich and the shooters. <laughs> it's been working for him so far. And that was a real balanced job by Oregon State in a 72-67 win. Louisville's only losses this year to UConn and to Florida State. Carter was fouled on the shot, and she'll get three free throws. Well, this has absolutely gone not very well for Stanford at all. It just couldn't get in rhythm offensively. The game was very fast to start, and I thought Stanford handled it well, and then they started turning the ball over, and, and that really gave Louisville the extra possessions they needed. Well, the Around the Rim podcast on ESPN app or Apple podcast is hosted by LaChina Robinson, and LaChina will be uh, recording live at the Women's Final Four this year from Columbus, Ohio, with the Around the Rim podcast. And what four teams will be there with her? UConn, of course, the overall number one seed. They still have to deal with Duke, Buffalo, and South Carolina in that Albany region. And that may be the end of the night for Asia Durr. And a 24-point performance with four rebounds and five assists. Williams. See if she can finish on a positive note. It's been a bit of a struggle tonight for Kiana. Especially when she's played so well the second half of the season. Made the freshman team in the Pac-12. The 
been a heck of a job for them just to get back here after their early season struggles. And they graduated three terrific seniors, about 50% of their scoring from a year ago. And Maisha Hines Allen now with that last bucket has gone over 2,000 points for her career. Senior looking like she's going to get at least one more game in that Louisville uniform. Shannon Coffey with her seventh triple of the season. Romano coming off the curl. There's a lot of people that I have spoken to in the last week. Mary Murphy, Krista Blunk, they cover the Pac-12 a lot on the Pac-12 network, said that they thought that maybe Ta uh, Tara had done one of her better coaching jobs, you know, going six and six and the way she turned the team around. And the thing that I'm always impressed about with Tara is when you speak to her about, as Louisville gets another offensive rebound, when you talk to her about basketball, she talks concepts and then she puts her players in a system that she thinks will help them be successful as Erica Carter drives to the rim. They've run up against a buzzsaw, however, tonight in Jeff Walls and the Louisville Cardinals in control under four minutes to go as Louisville looms for the Elite Eight at Oregon State. to 55 Louisville with the lead over Stanford and Jeff Walls having some fun with his team earlier this week in fact yesterday the half court heave doesn't even feet don't even leave the floor <laughs> no love from his team <laughs> drop the mic <laughs> that's it he's done now they have had their way so far tonight to move on for a Sunday noon game with Oregon State. The winner would advance to the Final Four in Columbus, Ohio. How about Maya Dotson? She's got a promising future at Stanford. Nadia Fingal, a sophomore, I think is going to get better in the offseason. Tara Vandeveer is so good at player development. Now, as good as Jeff Wells was on that half-court heave, Pig is not his game, Debbie. Oh, yeah. That, is, that, is that a Hickory shirt he got on Jimmy Chitwood? Hickory, Jimmy Chitwood. I ran the picket fence against Walls, and that was the game winner. And it, you know what? His whole team was rooting against him. <laughs> they were rooting for me. It was the um, eyes closed free throw that uh, got him on the letter I. You always have something up your sleeve in a game of pig. Well, good thing he kept it in my range because uh, if he had gone outside you 15 feet, I wouldn't let him shoot beyond the, beyond the earth. <laughs> it was fun. Hey, he challenged me. I didn't ask That's for right. it. That's right. That's right. Final three minutes. And the Cardinals getting ready to to join Oregon State, you know, Mississippi State, and UCLA. That's your region final in Kansas City, Bruins and Bulldogs. Four more games coming your way tomorrow as Jasmine Jones missed the land. Two where we start to say goodbye to some seniors who have had outstanding careers. Romano with the pull up knocks it down. A couple of starters will be departing for Stanford. Brittany McPhee and Kaylee Johnson. Brittany McPhee, first team all, Pac-12 and Kaylee Johnson will finish her career seventh all time in rebounding.
2.02 to play. Louisville called timeout. I thought it was a substitution timeout, but uh, they elected to take it. And both sides have uh, started to clear their benches now. So Oregon State is in. And Louisville set to join them. The Beavers beat Baylor tonight, 72 to 67. 26 points for Marie Gulich. 16 for Kat Tudor. She had four triples. And Michaela Pivot messed around and almost got a triple double. Maya Dotson means business. I can't wait to see her development next year. She's long and athletic, posts hard, defends well. See, she draws that foul because she posts so hard on Kylie Shook. You want to talk about the sustained excellence and, and, and coaches like Scott Ruick and the rest of the coaches around the Pac-12 point to Tara. Th this is only the second time this century that they did not have a Pac-12 championship, whether it's regular season or tournament. And Tara's success has helped elevate. She has been so good with the other teams in this league in helping grow the game around up and down the West Coast to the point where they have these teams now in the Sweet 16 there's, year in and year out. There's no question for many decades she waved the banner for Pac-12 basketball and trying to get everyone to compete and, and it could be to her own detriment but she wanted the game to grow and she cared about the young women that she coached and the women on the other teams and there's incredible respect. As a matter of fact I, I'm not sure if any other conference has a person that the rest of the coaches respect as much as the Pac-12 respects Tara. Romano, the hoop and the harm. And a lot of red will be ready to return on Sunday at noon for the Elite Eight. The region final against Oregon State for a spot in the Final Four. I want you to think two things about Louisville and Oregon State. Pace and tempo, and the Louisville Cardinals have not seen anyone like Marie Gulich on their schedule. Pace and tempo would be one. One. Gulich would be two. Okay. Yes. Gulich a force in the paint tonight for Oregon State. So we're going to go ahead and move Louisville on. Great job, Mike. Great job. And it will be the ACC and the Pac-12, Louisville, Oregon State. It'll be the SEC in the Pac-12, Mississippi State and UCLA. Four more spots. In the Elite Eight, up for grabs to Louisville. 86 to 59 is your final score. Louisville a winner over Stanford. 24 points for Asia Durr, one of four in double digits tonight for Louisville. For Debbie Antonelli and Allison Williams, I'm Beth Mowens, your Sports Center. able to orchestrate such a dominant performance here against Stanford we play well man um, we play great as a team I think we played super hard um, we started from the jump from the first quarter from the first play I mean we, we were in attack mode throughout the whole game and I'm super proud of my teammates you came out strong in that second half mm -hmm. finished with 24 what was your mentality at the half um, coach was you know drawing up plays for me and uh, anytime he draws plays up uh, you know I just try to knock that shot down you finished with a solid 24, but how are you, how are you feeling tonight? Feeling okay. Uh, I kind of feel sick a little bit, but you know, 
I'll be fine and uh, ready to go on Sunday. I mean, it's going to be a great game. I'm pr proud of my team. What are your thoughts about taking on Oregon State? You'll have to take on another team from the Pac-12 to get to the Final Four. They play well tonight. I mean, they're a great team. They're well coached. They play hard. They play hard for all four quarters. And they, they stay calm throughout the whole game. So, I mean, it's going to be a challenge. We're going on midnight. Do you want to give a little night night to everybody watching <laughs> since it's late and that's your saying? Of course. Night night, baby. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Asia. Thank you so much.